Q&A if you have some questions for us. So, but let's, uh, let's open a word of prayer. Uh, Almighty God, we are your people, and your church is meant to be not just uh, a gathering place, but truly a place that, that makes a difference in the world that they might live in. And so, God, may you continue to communicate your gospel through every action, and may uh, we truly today get just excited about what we see you doing in the next season of this church's life. We pray all this in your precious name. Amen. Hey, we're, we're glad you're here. Um, I think you all know I'm Dave, so I'm, I'm not going to really introduce myself, but the staff have been on a fun journey of the last uh, couple of months of just really learning and discovering maybe where God might be dry, uh, leading us to. We read a book called Growing Young, and they had a phrase in, this, in the book that captured our heart, and we really have owned this as a statement of our church staff as almost the vision of what we want to be about. And it's the, the statement is, people are our heart, Jesus is our mission. And that really has captured how we try to plan, how we try to think, everything we have going on. And we've been taking even more time as the elders have read the book now as well to really start thinking, what is the next steps for us to live this out? If we were going to make this statement, people are our heart, Jesus is our message, a daily idea, what would that mean? And for, for us, it really comes back to Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verses 11 through 13, which, which reads, So Christ himself gave us gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service, so the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And so really to accomplish this grand vision about how do we see those of us who have maybe a role on staff or as elders with the church to really build up others, how do we live out this vision? I, I challenge each of the pastoral team to come up with a vision picture. And I used um, my own ministry as an example. And so this is what I kind of showed the staff. Um, I took this phrase, here is a symbol from a Disney um, promotion. And then I took a picture from the Avengers movie. And I said to the, to the staff, said, you are my ministry. And that's really what I wanted to hear is that we were assembling them. And my, I, our, my vision statement for about my role on our church staff is, is to encourage and equip and empower the pastoral team and volunteers to heroically lead the church to embrace the heart of God, to reach their friends and serve others. And so I told the, the staff, you guys are the ones that are going to make this happen. And as we equip others um, to do the work, that we're not just the, the staff, not the doers, but we're merely the equippers, we're going to see God's people raised up. We're going to see God's people become into maturity and the church mission to be a church that is of, of disciples who make disciples will continue to grow. And so we, one of the things that I'm excited about is just how God has been using our midweek worship service to really become a chance for others to, to lead in, in their worship, others a chance to teach out of their giftedness and a chance to really just grow in our understanding of God's Word, but also to grow in prayer. We've started kind of reshaping what we do, and we're ending with some community prayer time and some intercessory prayer time, so it's a, grow, a chance to grow. And I told each of the staff, I said, have a prayer goal. What you desire to see God do that is beyond yourself, is beyond what you could do right here, right now. And I told the, the team, I said, my desire, my prayer goal is that God would make our midweek worship service a family night. That we would have children's ministry and our middle school ministry and things for adults all happening on this night so that the whole family can grow up in their disciple making. One of the things that we're starting, just so you know, in the month of May at this midweek service, we're starting a thing called Practices. It's, it's a teaching series looking at the practices of Jesus. And the goal is to teach in a way that you could turn around and, and walk with another believer in teaching them these practices so that we truly can become a church that makes disciples who makes disciples. For that's really what 2 Timothy chapter 2 is all about when it says, And the things you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who are also qualified to teach others. And so that's, that's really our heart, that we would just continue to build up others who would communicate and build up others and see their church reach other people, you know, relationship to relationship. But that's my role. My role is to kind of assemble the team and to build them up, to, to lead them. And so I want to introduce to our, our pastoral team, and each one of them are just going to share for about two minutes what God has put upon their heart to do, what their vision picture is, and, and their vision statement to share what God briefly is doing in their ministry, and then that will lead us to our elders. So Harley is our children uh, pastor of families, and so uh, why don't you come up? Hello. 
I am. This is what children's ministry looks like, having a baby. So come serve with us, and we will give you a baby to wear. Um, hi. Thank you um, for being here today. Yes, like he said, um, he gave us this task to really think about what our vision was for our ministries. And the picture that I came up with, I think that might go up on the screen, is a picture of bubble guppies. If you don't know what bubble guppies are, you are really missing out. It is a fantastic Nick Jr. show uh, where there are guppies that go to a class. Mr. Grouper is the goldfish. He is their teacher. Um, but what I really saw when I saw this picture, um, because this is all I watch all day long is bubble guppies, um, is that Mr. Grouper is their teacher, and he just fosters an environment where the kids can ask questions, uh, where they can learn, where they can grow, and that's what children's ministry is about. Is It's creating an environment for our kids um, so that they feel safe, so that they can ask hard questions, so that they have people who are loving on them, and so that they have people who are modeling them for them what it looks like to love Jesus. So the vision statement that I wrote out for our Cornerstone kids that you will see on any volunteer packets that we hand out or um, things that we give out to our families, that is the core of what we're doing in children's ministry, is it says, Cornerstone Kids seeks to help children engage in worship and community as they grow in their knowledge of who God is and learn to serve and share Christ with the world. Our heart is for families and providing them with the necessary tools and encouragement as we come alongside them in raising their families. Um, so really, my heart is for families. Um, it's, it's about what we do in our classroom, but even more so, it's about supporting our families, loving on them, um, and being a resource to them so that parents aren't um, just bringing their kids on a Sunday and dropping them off, but it's a, a week long where they feel supported by their community and they're able to learn and grow in who Jesus is so that they can then um, instill that in their kids and build a foundation for them. So one of my faith goals, um, what Dave was talking about with the family night is a huge part of what um, I am working towards. We want to make sure that we can take care of our kiddos on a Sunday and then we can build out a Wednesday program where kids can come here and continue to learn about who Jesus is and provide a place for their parents to have a Bible study as well and also mops. Um, so I started a mops program last year um, and it has been small but we are small and we are mighty. So my goal is to continue to build that program to be a resource for moms, um, for our military moms that are at Camp Pendleton, um, and just really come alongside families is what we're looking to do in our children's ministry. So um, I'm going to have Jake come up, and he's going to share with you about our youth. Thanks, Harley. Well, hey, guys. How are you all doing? So good to be here with everybody. Uh, so yeah, I'm Jake. I'm the youth pastor. Uh, my wife, Jess, she's really the youth pastor. I'm just getting paid for it. But uh, yeah, no, we are so blessed to be here at Cornerstone and be here in the San Clemente community with all you guys. Um, and what I found to be so important about this season of ministry, especially youth ministry, uh, is that with all the schools right now, a lot of stuff being shut down, a lot of our students' communication and fellowship with each other has been really stripped from them. Um, we found it to be really important to really, really strip down everything in ministry and just go to the foundation of what ministry is about, and that's doing life with other people, walking through life with others. And so for Jess and I, that's really been really honing in on those one-on-one -on -one relationships with each student right now. Um, and it's been really great because, like Harley was saying for the children's, we are small, but we are mighty. And uh, it's been a great season to really just pour into each of our students and understand what they're going through in life and really training and equipping them to share God's word with others at their schools. Uh, and so my, my statement or my picture is uh, Karate Kid. And I don't know, has anyone seen the Karate Kid? I'm sure a lot of us have. Well, if you haven't, it's a great, it's a classic uh, movie. And so, essentially, my students are Daniel's son, and, you know, you can call me Mr. Miyagi from now on. No, but, uh, no, but for real, it's, uh, the movie really is about uh, Daniel, who's a high school boy who uh, tends to get picked on from students, just uh, isn't really one of the most popular students, and he's looking to fight his battles against the opposition in school. 
And so he sees karate, and that's where Mr. Miyagi comes in. And Mr. Miyagi originally comes in to help Daniel kind of fight his battles against the bullies in school, right? To kind of uh, build up his character, build up his strength, to fight off these, you know, bad guys, I guess you could say, in the movie. Um, But really, Mr. Miyagi's role really turns from that of being a sensei or a coach to really a life mentor for him. And it really becomes uh, somebody who Daniel really looks up to in life. So whenever Daniel's facing something outside of school, whether it's with family or with friends, Mr. Miyagi's actually one of those people that's there for him, one of those main uh, sources of mentorship. And so although we're not teaching our students to do karate, or at least not yet, um, I I like to think of Jess and I kind of in that same role as Mr. Miyagi. And so I'm just going to read kind of our vision statement uh, moving forward with our ministry. And so there's three aspects I want you to catch in this. And it's uh, the first aspect is to train. The second one is discipleship. And the third one is evangelism. And so our, our vision statement is to equip or train students with the knowledge of who Jesus is, shepherd or disciple them through their pivotal developmental years and encourage them to be strong and courageous amidst opposition by putting on the full armor of God as they seek to share or evangelize his love with others. And uh, right now, there's a few verses that really go hand in hand with this uh, statement that I found to be uh, really important. And Proverbs 22, 6 says, start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. And so this is kind of for us, goes to that training aspect, is that if you can start the students off with a clear understanding of what ultimate truth is, that when they are out on that battlefield or they are out um, on their public school campuses or private school campuses, they can, they can know what truth is and they can share God's truth with other people who may not know him. Um, and that's really the goal. And uh, right now, we're, we're doing a couple things to kind of equip our students. And uh, on Tuesday nights, we meet here at 7 p.m. when you guys are all up here doing your prayer worship night. We're down there in the youth room. And uh, something we've been really encouraging our students and a model we've been going through is our small groups with students. And this is really a kind of a gender-based identity. We have our girls' small group and we have a boys' small group. Um, It's been really great because I'll usually do a a little teaching, short teaching message, and then we'll break off into our groups and just get really more in-depth of what God's doing through uh, his story, but also through our story that he's walking through with us. Um, And that's been really great to just be intentional and pouring on that. And kind of a faith faith goal, a faith prayer that we're really hoping for uh, in our future with our students is to really build uh, the culture of uh, grade-based identity too and being able to split into two ministries and being able to have a junior high ministry as well as a high school ministry. Um, And we're not quite there yet, but you know, that's our faith goal. And so we're working towards that. And so we're hoping that when schools kind of come back together in, in this fall, um, things are kind of going back to normal. We can get on school campuses with, with FCA or any sort of Christian leadership on these, these public school campuses. We can really bring students in. But, yeah, we, we thank you for your prayers and your encouragement to us. We seriously, we really thank you for that. So thanks. I'm going to uh, introduce uh, Morgan, our college pastor. So welcome him up with me. Well, good morning or good afternoon now. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, so um, I have the pleasure of overseeing and pastoring our college young adult group, and uh, when uh, we kind of formed it, I uh, wanted to give it a name that uh, went hand-in-hand hand with our mission, and the name that I wrestled with and eventually um, landed on was kaleo, and it's the Greek word that means to be invited into, and it's the word that Jesus used often. It's what Paul used uh, when speaking into fellowship or being called into something. Uh, some scripture to go along with that uh, that Paul would Paul used in 1 Corinthians 1 9. God is faithful by whom you were called into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Um, another one is Colossians 3:15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. Um, And one last one, as Christ said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And so this is the same word used over and over again. And so that is the main message that I wanted to um, proclaim. And uh, kind of a statement, a vision statement that I uh, was able to put together is Kaleo is a community that loves Jesus, loves people, 
and are patiently growing with the Lord in whom we have been called into fellowship with. And um, the, you know, the image that I, I used uh, comes from my childhood, um, is from the movie Hook, if you've ever seen it. Uh, we see that all these boys, the lost boys, they come from different backgrounds, uh, different stories, how they landed in Neverland, but the one commonality is that they were lost and then found in Neverland. And we were all lost and were found in Christ. And one thing, I don't care what culture you come from, where you are, what language you speak, the one thing that we all can come together for is food. And that is exactly what they're doing. And this is right before the epic food fight of the movie, uh, which sometimes the church can get into. Uh, but we can come together for food. And that is a common theme even in the Gospels is that we see Christ uh, bringing his people together during a meal. And so this is what uh, uh, our main theme, this is our main uh, emphasis in Kaleo, in our college group, is to bring people into that fellowship with not only the church, but most importantly, with Jesus Christ himself. So I'm going to hand it back to Dave. All right, so that's how our, our team is trying to live out that hope of uh, people are our heart, and Jesus is our message. But now we want to give you really kind of what we say is a big, big faith goal for our church. That really is the next phase of our building program. So I'm going to introduce one of our elders, Rob Williams, to just come and take us through this next part. Okay, I'm going to make this quick, but a lot of people probably don't know the history of where we've been as far as the church and this campus and where we're ultimately going. So in 2003, 2004, the city approved the trailers down there. One of the things that they said that they needed us to do is to ultimately get an approved master plan to take the trailers out because they're temporary. Cities um, don't allow trailers on properties as a permanent structure. So in 2005, we got a master plan approved to ultimately get rid of the trailers, build the building you're in right now, and then add a two-story to the building, then take the trailers out and actually tear the house down. And that was going to be a parking lot. City approved all that. Um, first phase was the building we have here. So we went through, um, went to the bank, designed all the drawings, um, thought we had some finances put together with the bank, found out the bank actually wants to get paid back on the loan. Um, so we had some different sources. We had a permit. We had a year to get the thing ready to build. A week before it expired, we pretty much, we met with the elders and we said, this is not gonna happen, let's do plan B. Just do some remodel work in the back and paint and carpet. And that's pretty much where we felt we were gonna be. A day before it permitted, an individual who's not part of our church stepped up and said, stepped up and said I'll pay for it all. And we're like, a day before? I understand that God has timing, but that's like putting it at the very end. The purpose of that is God understands that he tells us who's in control. Our faith, we had faith in God, but after that we're like, we know who's in control of this. And anytime we think as individuals that we can control our destiny, that's a story you might want to remember. We built this. We have no debt. The entire campus is debt free. So with that, the city really likes this. A lot of people think this is an old historic building. Um, and we renovated it. Then the city came back and says, you know, we understand that you want to do a phase two, but we really don't want you to add a second floor onto the building. We really like the single story. And we also really like the house. I said, well, that kind of messes up our entire master plan. They said, well, let's look at alternatives. So we have been kicking around different ways to not affect this building at all and try to keep the, it's not an historic, even though it was built by Ole Hansen himself for his daughter, it's not considered historic because there's been a lot of things that have happened with it. Termites are pretty much holding it together. Um, and so we said, well, we can probably work with that. So what I have here, in fact, I'm going to move this. I want to move it so people can see the whole thing. There we go. Can you guys see it on this side or not? Sure. Move this over here. No, I'm good. I think. We'll see. So I'm going to flip this one around. Ultimately, this is what we're proposing to the city. 
We're going to keep the building we're in right now and not change it at all. We're going to get rid of the parking spaces. I know everybody loves the slanted parking spaces that are here. <laughs> we're going to turn this into a real courtyard, so there'll be no driveway at all. So all the parking spaces down here will actually go generally in this area, and we're adding a few more in the mid parking lot. But there'll be a handicapped space here. That ramp, there'll be a ramp going up to the upper area. This is currently where the trailers are today. They're on an angle. They're kind of like this right now. We're putting a single-story, multi-purpose classroom there as well with a nice open patio, remodeling the entire interior and exterior of the main house itself as far as it'll be the offices. Right now, you come in, you step down several steps. We're raising that all so it's all level. So there'll be no steps from the parking lot down to the lower campus. It'll be all one level. So that'll come in just one level here. Underneath here, because our street drives through, we'll have some parking. Because the property slopes so quickly, and when the soils engineer is saying, you've got to come in and put in concrete caissons to catch up to the slope, and it's ex very expensive, I said, well, what if I just did a basement? So underneath this, there will be a basement that's unfinished so the youth can beat up. <laughs> 10 foot. So this is the new floor plan. So essentially what it is, it's a, a true multi-purpose. It it's a flex space. It could be one large space, or we can, very similar to what we're doing in here, where we've got that partition that moves around, we'll move multiple partitions. We can create four classrooms, or two classrooms, or one classroom, or no classrooms. We've got the main restrooms and all that on that upper, so that whole area, like not right now, we've got this kitchen here. That kitchen will be remodeled a lot smaller, we'll expand the nursery, expand the men's restroom, and expand the women's restroom, but that's pretty far down the road. <laughs> so with that area down there, that's gonna be our event area, be our youth area, so when we have large gatherings, we're gonna have a full commercial kitchen, and believe it or not, Jay, storage. <laughs> so you can pretty much, any table, all these little storage things will be gone. So they'll all be down there permanently. So once you, but you'll go down this area here, you go down the stairs to the youth room. Now the youth room's not gonna be a basement, it is technically, but on all two sides will be windows because that canyon slopes pretty quick. So Mr. Miyagi there can actually have his youth room and everything, and it's essentially about 32 by 65 with a 10-foot ceiling. And if right now we're planning on being unfinished, down the road we can have projects, electrical, but it's just, you know, in a future restroom, but again, more storage, Jay. So, this is what it will look like. The space here is pretty much the same size, but not as wide. This is 40 feet, so it's almost the same size as this, but several feet, obviously, it doesn't have a cathedral ceiling. So this is what it will look like from the parking lot here and from the main area. So these doors here will open up so you could have, this is a full covered area, so you could have a huge opening, you could have all kinds of different events. So obviously staying within the style of the architecture that currently the building is. So that's, the building down there. that's the building down there, right. Here, that's a gate so nobody can get in there. You know, so we do have a, a homeless problem, you know, and we have problems with things. So we need to be able to protect that courtyard. So this would be a, essentially a, a very Spanish style gate that will be locked when we're not here anymore. So, you know, during the week, we can lock it up. One of the things we're going to do is currently in the office, the stairs off the street, you walk up a few steps. We're gonna fill that in. So the access to the office will no longer be from that. It's gonna be coming off this parking lot. So it'll come in through this side of the fireplace. And so we'll fill that in and create essentially a nice open office for, the, for staff. And then you'll walk straight out, because right now, you know how you walk down? Well, now that we've raised everything up, you'll walk straight out level to the courtyard where the multi-purpose room is. And then you'll walk down a separate staircase down to additional storage for the office staff itself. And this is what it's gonna look like when it's done. So to match the style, a small little quaint 
office that matches the style of the rest of the campus. So, so right now I'm going to end this. We're going to have some questions with the elders. So if you've got any questions just in general or questions about this, be more than happy to uh, answer it. But right now we're just going to shift it to the elders if you've got any questions for us. All right. So, um, yeah, so this really was a chance for you to, to hear from Ron and Rob and Steve and I if you had any questions about membership process, about the building process, or any other question you want to ask. So, um, Ron, you can come up here, too. You're one of us. <laughs> All right, he's, he's also one of the four elders, just so you know. He's, he's sitting there. Any questions you might have about uh, what Rob just shared, about the membership process, or anything else? Savannah. The plan is that will be their multi-purpose room on Sunday. It's no different than it is today. D during construction, they won't be able to meet there, so we're looking at different options of putting a temporary tent in the parking lot so they can meet there on Sundays. But at the end of the day, that's where they're going to be meeting. Okay. You, um, uh, Rob had said <laughs> that uh, in the design process, we're going to be talking with Elbane Pastor as well as others who use that facility like Jake just to make sure that it's all up design with them in mind, but yes. Ah! Richard? Yeah, the, it's the uh, there will be actually wrought iron uh, based on the style on those windows, but remember it's also fenced off at the property line. So they'd have to climb a pretty tall fence to get to it, and we'll have cameras all over that building, and that you know it'll all be worked out. Right. So, uh, what would, what's going to be the first thing that you guys do? Like get city approval. <laughs> <laughs> so once you get the approval, what, what well, what kind of give you an idea on the finances on this. So right now, just on the building, not what we're looking at the office right now. We haven't actually put any dollars to that. We're looking at about $1.2 million to do this. Um, we've got more than half of that in the bank. So, um, yeah. So our goal is to raise, you know, to have some fundraisers to get that raised, maybe, you know, like we did here, um, or worst case, get a very small loan with a bank. But that would be um, getting the drawings, working with staff to fine tune the drawings as far as making sure all their needs are met. And then from there, um, go through the city process, get the funding. The first phase then would be to take the trailers out, and then we start. So we're hoping, based on our timeline, if everything goes as smooth, the city's controlling this probably more than anything, because they always do, um, probably start construction in about a year. And then what's the time, time frame? It's probably going to be about a year and a half under construction. taking the fifth on that one. Um, <laughs> we haven't, you know, that's obviously if that staff hasn't brought any of that up, but, you know, that's something we can definitely consider. Sure. That's a great question. Yeah, we're filming the, the stage. Do you have a big picture idea? We don't have a little fine tune detail. What about the last year and a half? Uh, we've been praying about how to move the floor because the city has a timeline on us. So we've been praying. much money already in the bank because through generosity of just the church we already have half that amount in the bank so really as we think about faith goals really our faith goal is that we would be able to raise the other half of it and and go into that debt free because that really is our heart to stay that way so we can maximize the dollars in other places so yeah. it won't survive um yeah, that's going to be parking plus the grading and all that. So that whole area, pretty much that whole lower campus, except for the building itself of the church, is you know, all the trees, all the landscaping, all the structures, the garden will be um, reworked. Yeah, Richard? We're actually going to lose four spaces. 
Yeah, I was able to get the, convince the city that based on that number, the 270 occupancy, that's normally the way they calculate the parking. But I was able to convince them that we get about 120 to 125 in here. So they're now considering these fixed seats, even though they're not. And that they allowed us to reduce our parking demand. always an option I mean we can always look at that um, I mean that's yeah yeah the cost of what the current owner wants with that property we could build this entire building No, the look was fine. What they were looking at is, you know, they like the single story, because remember, we're in a neighborhood. This is all, even our zone is a residential multifamily. We're not a commercial zone here. And they like the neighborhood setting of the single story. And they like the fact that now we're gonna put that as a single story and maintain the house. Because they didn't like, well, they liked the two stories originally, but they didn't like the fact that when we tore all that down, that's gonna turn into parking lot and they want it to be a little bit softer, so but putting the buildings in, reworking the building, landscaping and all that, and not have a two-story, that's why they're really working with us on parking and all that kind of stuff. So they've, they've been real, fairly easy to work for, work with, actually. It has not been. It hasn't been established. The um, we'll, we'll, this is just the beginning. I've had some preliminary discussions with some contractors. I have actually actually talked to the contractor that built this for us, um, and as well. Um, so what we'll end up doing is once we get to a certain point of the design before we get too far, we'll probably bring a couple contractors in to put together a preliminary budget, make sure we're still on track with everything. And then we'll probably pick a contractor early. So that contractor is now part of the team so we can bounce things off of them as far as costs so we're gonna get too far down the road and find out the budget went sideways. So that's normally the way we're gonna end up doing it. Yeah, Richard. Well, the city has a zoning code so the Council and the planning commissioners and all that they don't they don't make those changes What's that again Well, I wouldn't say yeah, I mean um, it was more of a if you work with us on this we'll help you out with this Right, so yeah, this property based on what we're doing here. We maxed out We won't be able to do much at all as far as any additional square footage unless we buy another piece of property Pretty much, yeah. And the expansion to the bathroom, is that, that's the second or third phase? Yeah, that'll be, the building would be done, the office will be done, um, and then we'd probably then come in here. Because we won't need this as a facility, we use it now as far as a large kitchen and all that. So we'll probably turn that into a very small kitchen and then rotate bigger nursery area and bigger uh, men and women's restrooms. You don't have to lock the door, yeah. I would recommend locking the door anyway. Any other questions before we close in here? Are you going to expand a little bit in the kitchen and then maybe in the kitchen so that you can do uh, a bigger kitchen and have that ability to do that? Down there, we have to be careful. Yeah. So um, the city allows us to use the kitchen like we did here as just for the church. Beyond that, it's got to be turned into a, a commercial kitchen, which brings the health department in, and that's one department you do not want brought in. And same thing down there, we're going to make it to the city that it's just the church. If they hear that we do things outside the church, they'll make us turn that into a commercial kitchen, and our budget will kind of get blown.
Exactly. presentation part has been recorded. I don't, was the Q&A as well? Oh, Jackson, thank you. So uh, if you ever want to go back on YouTube and you want to watch it, you can do that or share it with other friends um, that weren't able to be here. Um, but we are grateful that you are here. Um, just for showing up today, we have a, a gift for you. No joke. Um, you're going to be able to get one of our Cornerstone community bags that we've been holding on to that no one else can get um, or buy. So uh, Jake has one of these for each of you at the door on your way out. Just for saying thanks for being here. You actually blessed us because we were like, is it just going to be the four of us again? Like, you know, we, we, we talk a lot, but we're just so thankful that you guys are here. So I'm going to ask actually uh, Ron just to close in prayer. Hopefully you're not too jet lagged from getting back from Tanzania. Uh, no. <laughs> Gracious God, thank you for um, just calling us sons and daughters, adopting us into, and Kaleo, inviting us into your family. We're so blessed. And then to build your church and living stones and, and how a good foundation is laid and we're building the next course on it. So we bless you for your goodness towards us, your kind intention, your plans for welfare, not calamity. And uh, Lord, we thank you for the uh, practical growth, the physical growth of our church. But we pray that we would be disciples who make disciples who in turn disciple others and that we would be salt and light in our community, that our city would be blessed because of the presence of your church in San Clemente and our South Orange County region. And uh, we just live to glorify you and uh, continue to knit our hearts together, unify us, uh, give us the grace and the, the will and the courage to love one another and to share you with those we come in contact with. So bless us as we go from here now and help us to keep pace with you. Lord, we can't rush you and we certainly don't want to lag behind. So as you have displayed many, many times, your ways are perfect and your timing is amazing. So, um, so we trust you as we go forward. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>